But listen, when you have a dove, uh, maybe a, a pigeon or some, they are called differently. Do you know it comes to pick the grains that you have dropped? Very humble. Very innocent. But very attentive. And very sensitive. Any advance you do. That threatens it. It will fly off. What do you think about that? The church of Jesus Christ. I think about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is returning to the church. It's like the glory is returning. That's why you're seeing different gifts trying to sprout. But it's very sensitive. It'll fly off. For example, if it sees pride, and all the things that are of the carnal nature. Now, when you begin to pursue God on a serious level, these things that I'm telling you will begin real. To begin to become real. Now, in a very soft tone, I want to share something to that effect. Don't forget that introduction. Last week I said I want to face you my people. Some of you are close friends and close associates. Some of you are mightily cutting this burden. Here or in your ministry, wherever you are. And I want to speak to you as a true brother. Knowing that behind me and in front of me and you together lies a very, very huge task. 
Amen. What you are the great commission. Amen. What you are doing, young Nia, in Yima, in Langera Dushu, the Luoma Maroc, the teacher, a peck, a mom, you walk, a hurricane, or a mom, you walk. Each and every one of you in your bedrooms. One Dusha Chela Chele, you chicka one of Burie. Listen to me. Winya must have a spare bag with things packed, combs, lotion, scrubs, ready to go to preach the gospel. Ichika nika niburi emiri bed keri kapu moro. Ame iti kera kefwi mo wiri ginoro ke kena me mite. Ame nwodo iti atera nika ukoni jua wuri jiri iyai which the tiju kwa shida. This is unprecedented. This is not like before. Man petiye balakita me ana hano chon. Now, don't even be let the world the, you are looking at bias that yeah. revelation that we are sharing tonight. Somebody to read Revelation 6 6. Now we are continuing from that second Kings 4, especially around verse 7. Somebody said, and I concur with him, that I believe that Jesus is already standing up. And like our brother was blowing the trumpet here, the trumpet is about to sound. It is prophetic that in this, these days we are living in, the greatest country in the world elects a president whose name is three quarters of trumpet. So we are almost left with only E.T. Now, I say this very seriously. Most of you believe that God is a God of readers. He speaks in dreams, visions, and readers. And I have prophetic reasons to let you know that before this guy came to government, it was prophesied, even his name. Now, God also speaks using the events of this world, even if they are politics or economics. We were preaching from the rural areas of so much task because majority of our people are unschooled, so they don't have access to a lot of information. And yet the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So you and I are not going to be shallow-minded in the way we approach the gospel, just to get excited and open Genesis to Revelation without really paying attention to what is happening in our current world. Because God is dealing with this world. So take nothing for granted. Even what is happening in Israel. Don't think it is for granted that Jerusalem is becoming capital in our days. Jerusalem. So I can't go there right now. That's a separate topic. It's so deep. But those of us who read the last three days, that this lady said, and this is the theme of the conference, except a pot of oil. As good as those revelations and stories were, 
Now, I want to bring you the prophetic dimension. As somebody who bows in the presence of God for the rest of my days since I was called to salvation. Some there was a servant of God right here, Pastor Francis already said, the Old Testament was a shadow of the things to come. More so for the New Testament, but how much more for the days we are living in? And let me already tell you, that the woman speaks about the church. And the whole, of course, you know, speaks about the anointing. So the reader, wherever you are, behave like a reader and be stood up. Please. Man, low version. Ekate win you do noro. Ame opelu yakina le yakwa. Angwen. Kun kovuni. Kalngano. Waradek. Waradek a shell. Pishili a shell. Kalcha yini. Waradek a a dek. Pishili a shell. Ento mo. Kerevino. Kur. Kur ibal. Kur ibal. Kur ibal. In other words. Do not hurt the oil and the wine. Actually, from the King James Version, it says do not hurt, do not cause a wound. So the lady said, except a pot of oil. And our revelation is saying, do not hurt the oil and the wine. Now let's go to Psalms 105, 15. Now I, like, I beg you to follow this very carefully for those of you who want to live like the apostles live as if tomorrow Christ returns. Because I'm telling you we need to return the seriousness of this commission as we live in days whereby everything is seemingly diluted. What does it say? So that reading in English says, Touch not my anointed. Do God's prophets no harm. So again, Psalms. Revelation was agreeing with the psalmist. But also let's go to Isaiah 10, 27. I'm just going to hit and run. I want to show you what is at play in the days we are living in. Because I'm telling you the church is several years old now. The church has seen tons things changing and what really matters right now again you read that one Twenty seven says in the nono ye chere binu ya okoy ikori lori meridang obinu toro okoy nguri which says of course uh, the anointing will break the yoke. Just that. Praise God. Amen. It says in that day, which we could say, these are the days. So when this woman said, except a pot of oil, 
Do in it. between the ex the interchanges between her and the prophet. Don't catch me. Daho ni ukwabo ko he ni monoro ni kwanyo ka bino me mo. Ame don utu le yogi ni kopi ya kina en kira duarping. Ah, uh, the church is called a she. Ame cha koni eni nuo tia chunga kaka wanka nisha. Ame no beru dana dano. And him is God. Because the prophet stood for God. Matter of fact, nothing the prophet did that was miraculous, that was of human origin. So if this was the woman, and that was Elisha, this was the church, and that was God. Because God likes to talk in metaphorical. God. God likes proverbs. The disciples asked Jesus why his terminology is communication when Jesus was introducing ministry was so full of parables. It was not until the, the, the latter half of his life ministry on earth that Christ began to talk in literal terms after this, the disciples were offended by the way he was talking from the heavenly perspective. Because I don't blame Jesus because we come from God. So he expects us to be familiar with his heavenly nature. Because Jesus expects us to be familiar with the things of heaven such that when he communicates in parables, maybe readers, we are able to pick it up and connect and, 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 and understand so it. So without introduction, I want you to understand all those connections. Now, Revelation is talking towards the end of it. The whole should not be hurt. Now, no wonder, you know, Pastor Angela, I shared about the oil you brought from the United States. There are several end time signs around oil. Including, of course, cultic and fake one. But before we go further about this oil, actually, the oil is actually you. The anointed one. Now, I'm not going to shout on this message. But listen, I want to read to you some of the things I wrote down on my notes. Number one, I firmly believe the distinctive role of oil in the tail hand of the last days. It's going to be very distinguished. Listen, those of us who will thrive in the healing ministry, in, in, in the gospel ministry, in the hospitality ministry, in the, in the singing ministry, in any administrations in the church, even our gathering together, whatever we could call it. We will not make any progress if the oil is not there. If the Holy Spirit is not there. If we scare the dove. And many of us are in the business of scaring the dove. His role is going to be so distinguished. And I can leap like a deer on this premise. Because I have seen, I have certainly seen the benefits of ministering under the answer of the Holy Ghost. I did not come you with words that were enticing. Eloquence or 
the wisdom of man. Because that has its own space and limitations. But he said, with the demonstration of the power of the gospel. Those of us, or those of you who are upcoming in ministry, I want you to know that if you thought you had ever sought God, it is time just to begin. And actually, if this makes sense to you tonight, don't quit this phrase. You can roll until the morning. Because I'm telling you that we are on a journey. Praise the Lord. Amen. In these days we are living in, let's go of the things that we have brought around us. Let's come in the presence of God. Let's come in the presence of God. Let's draw a, the full mandate. If you want to write it down, say, draw the full mandate from heaven that concerns your life. And begin to run straight with what the human being called you is sent to do on earth. Let us avoid the swing of the pendulum on this side and on that side and on that side. Because it's going to waste us time, not only so, it's going to miss us heaven. Revelation twenty two seventeen. And you know what? I'm not gonna go far really. I'd rather speak from the spirit. And the Bible says Whoever has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I believe my ministry is to appeal to the spirit world of people. Hallelujah. Amen. Now what does the Bible say there? Our brother was writing. 17 says, Chunya chil kere atera tia koboni bie Nata winyu dang mirugam ni bie. Meaning, Jesus, come. Amen. What you are going to do is Jesus Christ or Bill. Now, don't you see the interrelationships? Nata. 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 Another rela relationship that we are bringing here. He said, the spirit and the bride say come. So we have talked about the spirit and the bride. We talked about the oil. We talked about the Elisha and the woman. It's not any mistake that God is sending ministers to us like Pastor Angela who has had the privilege of visiting glory land. I recently had the privilege of traveling with a man to the U.S. the other month. I'm promising you I saw a demonstration. An, an extravagant demonstration of the heavenlies that my brothers, wherever we were in America, were blown away that such things are still on earth. Of course, God was using all of us, no question. And when I see things like that, I am always like, but then what is next? Isn't this some last trumpet kind of call? The spirit and the bride says, come. If we were to close our eyes right now, can we do that? Can we see a lifting? Don't lift your hands, but do you see the whole church, even this one sat down here, do you see that every one of them he seemingly lifted their hands straight up to heaven to say, Come, Lord Jesus, 
by the way of their habits and the characters and their lifestyles and the commissions of their lives. You can open your eyes. The spirit and the bride says come. Let me tell you something. Now again, this is a risky statement to say. But I mean, I, I was writing as I was hearing, or writing on my phone. Churches, churches, Kanisha. be they in the village, be they Catholics and Anglicans, Orthodox, etc., Orthodox, Pentecostals, whoever calls on Christ's name, listen, is soon to unite. But not the unity of ecumenism. Not the unity of the structural church. They will unite in the mission field. They will, they will unite in the unity of purpose. They will unite on the basis of obedience. Because the Holy Spirit is not a respect of person. Now, that is if we say religion will unite, it is very hard to describe it. But I'm talking about individuals, the way they call themselves. But the purposes. Now, let me divert a little bit. So I'll give you an example. Right now, if you take in our midst, you will find we are coming from different denominations. Actually, including those ones I have mentioned. And then you will ask yourself, by what brings this person here? Revivals are breaking around the world that people are forgetting about their different uh, houses or uh, parties or connect. The Spirit of the Lord is beginning to draw his obedient sons and daughters. People are beginning to pay prizes that you are wondering. But, but this person is not the typical of the born again Lord. The Bible says no one can come to the Father unless he draws them. So if you are stuck in your religion and that's what you pay homage to, maybe because you have just started it like ours, the Lord is going further than what you are struggling with. The Lord is going, I mean the earth, it's too old. It is you who is late and young. The spirit, the Bible says, the spirit and the bride says, come. It doesn't say. Now you, you, look at, you look at your Bible. Check it very well. It's time for Bible study. Revelation. I love it. The Bible says, the spirit and the bride say come. Servants of God, do you know why the Bible doesn't start with saying the bride and the spirit says come? Because the bride is biased. The bride would first want to include its members. Before the spirit agrees to say come. So suppose in this church uh, only 20 people are allowed to enter heaven and no. I am the lead pastor and I am in there and the spirit has not yet spoken I would say 
uh, but sister so and so was a good usher. Why don't you allow her also to enter before you close? Apore ilaro mimi yuni, kau kido ane nati atel lokanisha ni utami yatwe ni luongjo, unyo wakido ane pora chaka meno lelenga lelenge, amego ni yeno bero teach kera tu tuan, mano bero chokera, yine ni chat donyo. So the the thing is, the spirit is the leader. Then the church will follow. The church is not the leader. Then the spirit will follow. No. The spirit will lead. So the spirit will lead. He will draw whoever he has seen his or her heart in conformity to the commission. And sometimes you wonder how God does these things. That's why in the Bible, Jesus said to the people, to the Pharisees, said, if you stop my disciples, the, God, the Lord is able to raise stones to praise him. So sometimes you wonder how even me, if I stop myself from worshiping, from praising, from fasting, from preaching the gospel, it will not be any different if God would go to the Muslim, uh, to the mosque, to pick a saint and turn him into a Christian and he begins to preach the gospel. Now, I tell you something. The Lord is the author of time. We human beings, we think we are the only one who know time and how to manage it. But God is the best timekeeper than anybody else. That's why he does his things in season. Hallelujah. Amen. So when God saw, when Christ God saw that the apostles he had just left on earth were delaying the gospel. Whom he had been with for three uh, intensive years. God did not only pick a Pharisee, but he picked a Pharisee of the Pharisee. Worse than an Indo. He ambushed him on the way to Damascus. He gave him, he gave him an overdose of the gospel. <laughs> and this guy went like Elijah past a hawk. The church of Jesus, which is seated here. Amen. You are yet to see the, some of the most anointed young men and women that will preach with the speed of the angels and all of our old men and women will have saliva pouring on the right side and pouring on the left because they cannot understand the speed with which God has brought some of this people up. One time the Lord showed me a vision of such trips. And I even shared with the people. And he did not wait for a month to begin to happen. I want you to get ready in this place. Because when your heart is open, the Holy Spirit is speaking. I told my wife recently. The Holy Spirit spoke alive to me. I, had it. I was bothering over something. Listen to what the Holy Spirit said to me. I'm not ashamed because I was. A hundred percent sure the Holy Spirit spoke. He said, open your heart so the Holy Spirit can comfort you. I said, but, but my heart is broken. So it's up to you. I've already spoken. The Holy Spirit has spoken. So I said, how do I open my heart? So I began to research how to open my heart. And indeed, when I opened my heart in, in the midst of 
He began to speak to me. He began to speak to me. Now I cannot go into details right now. But just to say, if you have come thinking we are here just for another church, some of us are trying to open up to hear what he has to, hear, to say to the churches. Let me tell you that the gospel has already wasted and consumed my time. I was a teacher by profession. And that is what that is my profession. And I excelled in it. My children, my, my students were even passing very well. And then I got something over me telling me to abandon teaching. Because I wanted also to feel good. And we began this ministry the way you saw it. Therefore, I'm not playing around with the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Now, Mani. this Bible says, Bible the spirit bo and the bride, atera. not the bride and the spirit, Pe atera kere it doesn't begin with you. Pe kere it begins with the spirit. Kere it will begin with God. Kere In order for you to go, Me yini wara nyim. one of these days, those highways will begin to be too narrow for you Yo to go. No, and no pera do romi yin Adoka dinga me per romi do what? Aha. Nyangu nuko. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift your hands and say, God, I'm ready. Do you know when God, God, God came to Paul, 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 sorry. God comes ready to go. He said, Lord, what would you have me to do? Oh, you know when God comes? Things are too heavy. The spirit and the bride says, Come. I want to control myself so that I don't go into the revelation part of it so strong. Listen, I have a serious intercessor beside me here who is really helping to. Listen, if you read that Revelation 6 6, every crisis on earth, and this is where Christians we are left behind. When you read that Revelation 6 6, and you read 2 Kings. 4-7. Listen, 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 listen. Everything is, 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 is rotating around economy. 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 Lim. Livelihood. Daily living. Whatever God will do, even the second coming of Jesus, is going to invade, is going to drop in the middle of, I don't know what language to say, but a rocket is like a rocket that will plunge into the realities of the current time. Whether sailing in the market, that's why even the Bible says, that's why even the Bible says, about 666, about the, the, the scarcity of commodities. We have not seen anything yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God is not coming, Jesus is not coming back in a special day where the, the, the shops have closed, the churches have closed, and everyone is in the mission field. Not so. Yesu Christo Bible uko ni NPA duoga medo nuoka nisha uyikere jopongo duha gi uko she jonyote ya tutujiri kanoro. Pe. Economy. 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 
And as you know, economy is key in politics. That's why people are struggling over offices, it's just because of economy. We must cooperate with the Holy Spirit now more than ever to help us interpret the times. Because every evangelist and every gospel ambassador I have met on the highways when I ask them, I find their secret is Holy Ghost, intimacy, communion, partnership, fellowship, obedience, respect, closeness to Almighty God, and listening to what the Holy Spirit has been saying. This is a life that is single out. Atu jiri maroke ken me wi lobo ena wuni nge wuni nyo ena me pe nge wuni moga me ana ruate kedgi imungi ka ruate kedgi atelle yu kedgi lob inuoni teho gi ame gino tu tich gini keda mochu chobo gina ber anyingi tia ruoke ni opono nyo boye ka ikubere kere chunya chil bedo kere lego kero banga noko banga chok yanyo wango banga icha walung du tika aliora liora tio banga We must now cooperate with the Holy Spirit more than ever. There's a song that we commonly sing here from a great man of God. He says, Jesus now. More than ever. We are sailing in stormy weather. All God's children you can tell the kind of ministry we still have, we're still growing, okay? This is where the ushers, the, the, the choir leaders, the lead singers jumps in so quick, even if it is two seconds. I, I, do know I do know you're sucking him, but I'm telling you. If you know the song, come up. I'm, I'm the kind of elder brother who leads my sisters and brothers sometimes with, with, a, uh, with roughness too. And some of you are my son, no problem. No, some of you, I am a son. But Jokene and Abedo would pedang pe hoti ye. Jesus na. Naturang yo wear upon you up. More than ever. We are sailing in the stormy weather. All God's children should dance together. Oh, we need Jesus now.
They may think I'm getting from internet. No, I believe in a Christ even now that human effort will cease to get results done in the church. The church that will thrive from today going forward it will succumb to what this woman said except a pot of oil. There are individuals and churches here that will see divine lip as they consistently trust God. Trust God. I believe in a real manifestation of the oil just like the Father manifested in the Old Testament. And do you know that the Father was so real in the Old Testament? Now listen, Jesus was so real in the New Testament. But after the day of Pentecost, how real has the Holy Spirit been. How real has the Holy Spirit been on a global basis? How real? It is a question compared to the Father and Jesus. I don't know how much you can compare Jesus Christ in the Old Testament that people can confirm that he was in existence. His spirit will not let us down in my generation. And know the Bible calls for the presence of the saints to be patient. Hallelujah. Amen. Will you lift your hands to the Lord right now? I want you when you go back home. I want you to really break low and humble. 
Sometimes we are laid down by the kind of leaders we have right in front of us. We give you praise. We lift your holy name. We the bride. When the spirit say come. Come and have your way. Move forth from here. And allow us to be your boy. Jesus our Lord. Yes, so Christo. Amen, Rama. We give you praise. Arise and be healed. Oh, in the name of Jesus. My brother and sister. May faith arise in your soul. Arise. My God will reach and meet your everything. You know what God knows how to lift you up. You know what God knows really what you need. And he has sent you and me to all the world. He will touch you. Some of those needs and challenges and problems, including sicknesses and poverty, can do afflict you. Cannot make any sense in the presence of God. Oh,
me, Lord, please send.